Shalom. My name is Ron Elkin. I am a uh, man who was raised in traditional Judaism. We went to synagogue every Friday night and Saturday morning. <clears throat> when I was about seven years old, I began to uh, attend Cheder, uh, Jewish uh, Hebrew school. And I, was, I learned about Judaism at that point. Um, my parents kept a kosher home. We celebrated all the feast days. And we had a rich heritage and a strong Jewish background. Uh, some of the memories I have is Simcha Torah, the celebration of the uh, final reading of the uh, last chapter of the Torah. And then we would celebrate by marching around the synagogue with uh, American flags and an apple and then a candle and as a kid that was a great celebration uh, mom kept a kosher home she was raised in Orthodox Judaism and my family was uh, a traditional Jewish family however as I grew up there was a lot of uh, concern in the family about finances and people were uh, worried my mom and dad fought a lot and I began to question why uh, is there so much trouble in the world? Why is there trouble in my family? Why is there trouble in the world? You see people killing each other. There's wars and problems. <clears throat> and I began to doubt the reality of God as I got into my teenage years. And so for a short time, I was an atheist. And I began to say there is no God. But I think really the truth is that I was angry with God. I was concerned about these problems I was seeing and my own concerns in my heart. Um, and so I later began a search for spiritual truth. I began to be wonder if there was a God, then I went into looking into different religions. I got involved with astrology and numerology and uh, that had some interesting aspects to it. I became involved with uh, meditation and yoga and even went to India all in the search of uniting with God, of finding peace in my heart, of finding emotional and spiritual healing. I think everybody, if they're honest with themselves, has to admit that they have problems one way or another. Nobody is perfect. You know, I'm not saying I was mentally ill or I was a you know, uh, that emotionally wrought, but I had my sense of disconnect. And I think most people, uh, you know, are maybe they're afraid to admit it if they grow up in a strict religious community. But the truth is we all have our doubts, we all have our concerns, and I was looking for truth. I kept on saying over and over, I want to know the truth. Why is there so many problems in the world? Why is there so much uh, hatred of why is there a lack of peace in my own life and so I investigated these religions in pursuing that and as I began to look at these different things I became fascinated with them for a short time but the yoga and the meditation stayed with me for several years and I was really in a way trying to connect with God as I would meditate for hours in prayer and praying I began to sense some problem, began to sense that there was a separation between me and God because of a word that we're all familiar with. It's called sin. And uh, in the Russian word, it's grech, grech. The sin uh, began to weigh on me, the sense of the things that I had done wrong in my life and I asked God to forgive me, but there still was this sense of separation. And people during this long period of time, from the time I was around 15 till I was 31, these searching days, witnessed to me about Jesus and told me how he had died for my sins. And I would make fun of them. I would say, how can you Christians say you're the only way to God? And, and not only that, but the Christians persecuted the Jewish people and created great problems for my forefathers. And so I would reject the message about Jesus. But God is amazing how he works things out. I had strong barriers against Jesus, but I happened on a book called Autobiography of a Yoga. 
in my Hindu and yoga days and meditation days. And I began to read through that and discovered that the author said that Jesus was one of the great teachers that God had sent to the earth. It didn't at all, wasn't at all accurate to the New Testament. It didn't quote from the Old Testament, but it did say that Jesus was a legitimate spokesperson for God. And so when Christian spoke to me, I began to listen a little more. And I saw that the person of Jesus was a fine individual, that he said nothing harmful. He said we should love our neighbor as ourselves. He said that you should love God with all your heart and mind and soul. And I began to wonder how it is that people were rejecting him. But then when the Christian said that he's not only uh, a prophet or a good teacher, but he's also uh, someone that you have to believe in in order to be saved, in order to be accepted by God, have your sins forgiven, that's where I drew the line. I said, I want to be, I want to go to God directly. I want to go to God without any intercessory. I didn't believe that was necessary. And, and actually, in a sense, in my heart, I said, why? Why should I have to go through somebody? But at a certain point in my 20s, I began to feel the weight of separation between me and God. And I said, well, maybe if I do a lot of good deeds, a lot of mitzvahs, that God will accept me. And so I began to look around and saw there was great need in the community in Northern California where I was living. I was born and raised in Philadelphia, but I had moved out to California. And so I saw there was a need, all kind of social problems among some of the people there, poverty and mental illness and marriage problems. So I decided to set up a community organization that would help people. And it became funded by the government. It's called the Russian River Community Center. At that time, it was called the Russian River Switchboard. And so I set this up, and it was approved, and we got some funding for it from the government. And to this day, it still exists in the Russian River area of Northern California. And at this point, it's probably helped thousands and thousands of people. But after this project was completed, it didn't give me peace of mind. It didn't bring this peace. The sense of separation was still there between God and myself. And so I set up another project with Sonoma State University to train uh, people on welfare how to be solar heating technicians. California has a lot of sunshine, and, and this was something that uh, was up and coming, uh, you know, a situation where people could learn how to do this and get off of welfare. And so <clears throat> that was approved, and we received some funding called CETA funding. And uh, this was a government program to train people to be able to get off of welfare. And so even again, with this project completed, I still did not have the peace that I was looking for, the sense of separation. Well, at this point, God began to have different people drop into my life who witnessed to me about Jesus. And I still resisted. I have to tell you about something that happened when I was... Uh, searching at this point. I I was actually at a nightclub listening to a group called, God has a sense of humor, the group was called the Last Chance Band, and while listening to their rock and roll music, all of a sudden it sounded like the heavens had opened up, and the music became absolutely celestial and beautiful. And I heard in my inside, I didn't hear a voice outside, but it heard inside me, a voice saying that it was Jesus, that he wanted me to find peace, and that he had died for my sins. And I got lifted up inside. I had been feeling depressed and alone. And after I experienced that uh, time there, I became uh, lifted up and, and very positive and began to sing to God and make up songs of praise to God. <clears throat> and so... By this point, I became convinced there was definitely a God, and I was looking to find out what God to worship. And so uh, it took another two years before I was willing to surrender to God's path to salvation. I still didn't like the idea that I had to come through Jesus. I wanted to come to God myself. And also my fear as a Jew of how I would be with, you know, by believing in Jesus, the 
the forbidden one, the one who we're not supposed to believe in. And so it took another two years before I finally, through the help of God's mercy and grace, came to understand that Jesus really had died for my sins. In the process of coming to that point, I read through the Gospel of John, where Jesus speaks the most about himself. And I had the measure of faith. God gave me the measure of faith. I don't know if God will do that for you. I hope he will. But he gave me the measure of faith to understand that it was true. And eventually, when I was 31 years old, I bowed the knee to Jesus and trusted in him. Well, I want to tell you right up, there was an explosion in my life. God changed me inside out. I began to experience the peace of God, the unity with God that I had hungered for and thirsted for. And uh, I can only be very you know, straightforward with you. At that point, I hadn't read a lot of the Bible. I had read the Gospel of John. I, of course, I grew up in Judaism, so we read through the Torah. And I knew the stories of uh, <clears throat> Joshua and Gideon and Samson and things, but I hadn't really read through the Bible to understand the Messianic prophecies. Um, I had a few scriptures that God, that the, the Christians had shared with me that, you know, God uh, loved uh, us and that uh, whoever believed in his son would have eternal life. But after I believed in Jesus, I began to real seriously study the scriptures, the Bible, the Old and New Testament. And that's when I saw the confirmation of what I had spiritually experienced. There's over 330 prophecies that Jesus fulfilled at his first coming. And there's many that he will fulfill when he returns. Uh, Jesus, uh, the Holy Spirit of God, which is a, it's a mystery how God is, uh, you know, uh, don't get me wrong, I don't worship multiple gods. I believe in the Shema, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is God, the Lord is one. But that word one, is a word that represents a plural unity and so somehow god communicated with me and drew me to believe in jesus but then as i began to read the scriptures the jewish prophets wrote and the scriptures in the bible um, i experienced that same guidance the word of god became alive and active in a sense it's in the book of Hebrews, in the New Testament, it says it's sharper than a two-edged sword. And it's able to awaken us to spiritual truth when we have ears to hear and eyes to see. Now, I don't know if you'll ever come to that place where God will help you understand who Jesus really is. As If you're Jewish or Gentile, it's the same problem. Your sins separate you from God. And you make all kind of uh, excuses. You're naturally rebellious against God. But God says that he is the way, the truth, and the light. And nobody comes to the Father except through him. This is the words of Jesus. And Jesus had to be God in order to die for your sins. But I trusted in him, my interior was changed. Spiritually, I became alive. I can only tell you the truth that I've never looked back. I've never regretted coming in touch with the living God because he has answered prayer, he encourages me, and every time I go to the, the deep well of the scriptures, I get refreshed by the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is living and active and is able to help us and guide us throughout our days. And so if you have not searched this out, if you have not asked God to reveal to you if Jesus really is the way to him, by faith in him, your sins would be cleansed, then you'd be united spiritually with God in the sense that you become his child, that God cleanses you of your sins and makes you a new creature in the Messiah. By that I mean you're, you're spiritually alive, whereas before you were dead. In the Jewish Bible it says that God will take our heart of stone and give us a heart of flesh. So if your heart is still stone, I encourage you to trust and believe in the one who can make it a heart of flesh.